Are you tired of all the dating games, rules, and societal norms that make falling in love confusing and stressful? Then join us as we ditch the script and empower you to establish healthy, conscious relationships. This weekly podcast breaks down popular dating reality television and educates you on healthy versus toxic dating habits. I'm Brianna, a licensed therapist. And I'm Alex, a trauma-informed and certified narcissist recovery coach. Are you ready to ditch the script? so funny right when we were supposed to unmute was like the time that your body needed to cough needed to do something (laughs) i think what i just witnessed was you just overriding it yeah is that what happened (laughs) my body was like not today (laughs) oh listen you guys Alex is so committed to the podcast. She's so committed to the podcast that she would actually stop a natural bodily function just to preserve what you hear on your end. Yeah. Preserving your ears. (laughs) Love you guys so much. Yeah. I needed that laugh. Hey. Yeah. We've had Mm. a great uh, morning. We've had a full morning slash afternoon over there on the uh, Mm -hmm. East Coast. That's right. It's one forty-five in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, what are we sorry. gonna talk about? <laughs> okay, first of all, we're gonna address. I'm just gonna give a little bit of a pre-context, which is that I am not allowed to eat solid food today, and I am oh. not doing well. I'm not doing well. Oh man! I'll be honest. I'm not built for this. I'm not. Girl. I have heard, I mean, who would be? I mean, yeah, we're animals. We need certain sustenance to survive and thrive. And you are having to rob yourself of that today. Oh my God. And, and, and in the name of Western medicine, Thank in you. the name of Western medicine, I, yeah, it's a TMI. I'm having colonoscopy tomorrow. And this is part of my pre colonoscopy preparation. And man, um, what and- it's also helped me. What? She's showing up to record the show for you guys. That's just right. Saying. That's okay. right. And you know what? I'm choosing to allow this experience to feed me because I'm starving. <laughs> yeah, of <laughs> true nutrients. Yeah. True nutrients. Real. So at least if anything, I can just have like dopamine release, dopamine release, dopamine yeah. release. Got him. Yeah. I, I um, have never been more aware of how much food content I consume and that the algorithm sends my way oh no that's the worst yes. you yeah. got a high accounts right now girl i can't be like not today satan with these foodie accounts it's like 80 percent of what i consume i had no idea i feel you food porn is sexy oh god i love food anything so with much. an egg yolk for me mm. you know what i have a Robin, lot of yes yolk? a lot of a lot of noodles a lot of asian noodles sent my way on yeah. the discovery pages oh send yeah. nudes send yeah. nudes um so if things feel a little chaotic <laughs> if you just We're see us do a chaotic shimmy, yeah, yeah. <laughs> every time my stomach growls i might just like have an outward shimmy to reflect what's happening I love it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So if you hear that sound approximately every 23 (laughs) seconds, that's what it is. Yeah. That's what's going on. Um, How are you? Oh, I'm great. I'm rested and Mm. I have my Grogu cup and mug rather. And yeah, we're we're on our way to a friend barbecue later today, which is going to be so fun. Oh, um, that sounds amazing. Yeah. Yesterday I started reading my friend's book, Ejaculate Responsibly, which I think every woman and man on the face of this planet should read because it is about mm. how abortion is really a man's problem, not a woman's problem, <gasps> which is such a great book. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. And it's a really easy read. 
Um, yeah, this gal that I've worked with a few times, like, long story short, Gabrielle Blair, Blair, she's amazing. Um, but read her book, Ejaculate Responsibly. Oh my God, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm it's writing, so great. I'm, not me writing it down right now. <laughs> um, let, and her, guy, let her know, let her know that yeah. it, like, it got me. Oh, of course. Upon the, I will. Su- the subject matter. The I subject will. Um, but if you're a guy and you want to know how you can support your woman and how you can help us women with our equal freaking rights that we would like, read the goddamn book. Thank you. Yeah, Thank just you. read a book. Just read a book. <laughs> Explore your options. Um, that sounds or so ask fun. women questions about the shit mm, we have to deal with. Humble inquiry. Yes. Yeah. 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 Take, take an interest on what happens with our bodies because- most of us that have any experience with birth control, not everyone does, not everyone needs to. Most of us uh, have stories about what it has been like to either consider what our options for birth control is like, yeah. uh, what that journey has been like. Being and... shamed to ask a guy to wear a condom as well. That's all addressed oh, in this book. Man. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I cannot. Yeah, for that, um, another amazing book recommendation is your, uh, The Body is Not an Apology, written mm. by, um, I want to get it right, by Sonia Renee Taylor. Amazing book. Everyone should read it. Everyone okay. should read it. Um, so there you wow, go. Wow, look at us. Just giving the literary Summer reading lyrics. list. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I've been shit. reading that been reading that book poolside which is such a great book to read poolside because it's like not like the cover is like red and yellow like really bright and i was just like mm. holding it up like i don't care who sees what i'm fucking yeah. reading right now mm. that's like <laughs> yeah. that's how i felt when i was in the airport toting around come as you are yes oh fuck love yeah. that Next and i was just like there's this because the if if you're familiar with the book there's um a picture of an open like like wallet or like little clutch, which obviously is like this playful way of like depicting a vulva on the Mm -hmm. cover, but it's a, 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 like a bag, like a, like a person's purse. And I just thought, think that's so funny. And obviously the title, it's like big giant letters. And there, I went through a whole little mental process in my brain when I was at the airport, I was like sort of ashamed, like this big pink book. I also, my entire life, I have like rejected the color pink because of its like closeness to femininity. Me too. Yeah. yeah. Now really? I love pink. you too. Oh my god! Yeah, one hundred percent. Now I love the color pink. But for mm. I am with you on that train. One hundred. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. I didn't know about that about the two of us. We can unpack it on another night together episode. <laughs> um, and so for I'm like I'm carrying this big pink book like like woman who reads you know and then and it's got a vagina on the cover or it's got a vulva on the cover yeah who reads crazy um and then like the title like i just went through all of this processing where i was like is this am i gonna be okay and then i had to be like brianna you're literally so in your head about this like first of all truly no one cares about you no one cares about you i mean second i do yeah, I know, but like but strangers I know what you mean. don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No one's like obsessing no, over this as much as you are. No one's paying attention. Yeah. No one's paying attention. Like no one is like texting them like woman reading the China book. <laughs> like no one's doing that. So yeah. um like chill the fuck out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I have to remind myself that often and I'm grateful for the reminder. Yeah. I love that. Thank you for sharing that reminder yeah. with us because it's a thing. <laughs> so- you're so welcome um i'm excited for your barbecue it sounds like there's gonna be food there yeah i'm gonna make a spinach and artichoke dip and jasmine like (sighs) shout out to jazz if you even listen to my show which by the way i don't expect that of my friends but like fucking love this chick she is the most amazing baker she makes this like sourdough cheddar Mm. jalapeno bread from scratch and it's like Mm -hmm so good so Mm. anyway it's gonna be a day filled with festivities also all of our dogs get along so like the dogs get to hang and it's just it's good times it's good times so amazing yeah so we're gonna have a good you know sunday fun day over here oh i love it i love it i'm sorry i talked about bread while you're currently starving I brought it up because i said that i thought that there would be food there listen i'm already in pain let's just 
<laughs> Pile Twist it on. the knife. Yeah. <laughs> I'll oh be okay. My God. Um, I did think about it the, today because I'm gonna I'm gonna bring Tucker over to my parents tonight because my mom's gonna give me a ride tomorrow. So I'm just gonna go hang yeah. out with them and maybe their conversation can distract me from my hunger. But then I realized that I'm gonna go there and like I have like a very classically socialized Jewish mother who <laughs> is like, "Are you hungry? Do you want to eat? Like, do like can I get something from the fridge?" And even when you're like, yeah. "No," like I already anticipate that I'm gonna be like, "No, I can't eat anything." She's gonna be like, "Here's pretzels. Here's yeah, and you're gonna red be like, peppers." No. I cannot I can't. eat. Yeah. Yeah, You're yeah, not yeah. hearing so, me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I thought about this this morning and I was like, oh my God, maybe going over there is a bad idea. But I do think that she is jello. So I think that I'm going to make some jello. There you go. Um, <laughs> not. <laughs> what, what flavor? Lime? The red one? Is Probably the red one fruit whatever. Jello? A red, a red is like a fruit, like a, a fruit punch. Mm, yeah. Blue raspberry. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's what I would hope, but I know that that's not what it is. Um, I don't know, but I'm sure that she's had it for at least three decades. Yeah. So it's going to be lives expired. On, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Does gelatin really expire though? Hmm. No, but you do have to like off the box. You have to like <laughs> clear the off, layer the of dust. dust. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, word. Okay. Um, we are we're answering an email today. We are. We're answering a question. A question. A question. Um, and uh, and un pregunta, if you will. <laughs> and it was so. What this That's person great. writes. You're almost too fluent in <laughs> Spanish for me, Brianna. Slow down. <laughs> oh yeah, slow it down. That accent too good. Um, <laughs> okay. How do I let go? Why is it so hard to let go? Why do I care too much about her feelings if mine were never a priority? Mm. I can feel the pain in this person's yeah. uh, email, which makes me sad. So I hope that you're doing okay. Um, me too. I like, yeah. I'm, I'm familiar with, even though we don't have the specifics of this question, which makes it just a tad hard to really like speak to and answer. I do very much relate to the, the like, like, what's going on with me right now? Why is this so hard? Like, how do yeah. I make this better? Like that very much feels like, like a heartache. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so first of all, just want to acknowledge that the pain is very real. And yeah. I want to start with the last question of the three. Why do I care so much about her feelings? If mine were never a priority, the short answer and without like knowing this person and being able to ask questions and all of that, it, it stems from a conditioned, it's a conditioned response that you picked up most likely in childhood where you yeah. have grown accustomed to take, put others emotions and needs above yours. And so when we are in romantic relationships, it's that times 10 because we're bonded with this person. So now you are so focused on how is she feeling? Why do you care so much more about her feelings than your own? Because again, you've been conditioned to prioritize hers over your own. Um, mm. And so that also caters into why it's so hard to let go. You know, there's these two questions paired together. Um, you know, again, total hypothesis here based on three random questions and not a full on questionnaire from this person. I'm going to make an educated guess that there's probably some anxious attachment here um, mm. where you feel like the reason it's so hard to let go is because there's something about this connection again, most likely stemming from conditioning in childhood that has you wanting to latch on as a survival response. You are equating the separation of this person and you as a lack of your value, as a lack of being able to survive without them because of the need for validation, the need for connection in whatever way that this connection was fueling for you. I use the word yeah. connection a lot there, but hopefully I'm explaining that. But it that, made okay? sense every Does time. That track? Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Am I doing okay yeah. at explaining that? Yeah. You're, so you're doing a great job. Yeah. So those are my two big things. It's a conditioned response for you to focus on other people's emotions and needs and feelings over yours. And that pairs with this deep attachment wound of if I'm left, it feels like abandonment. It feels like, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to survive. Um, those yeah. are my two, my, my two cents. What about you? I, well, I, I very much endorse everything that you just said. I think with the limited information that we have, I think that that's a, a pretty, that's a pretty good response to 
what's being questioned here. I think I want to try, I want to try to be as helpful as possible and be like, okay, what do we do with this? How do you take care of yourself afterwards? And I don't know what your support system looks like. I don't know what your, I don't know who is around you, who's in your life, who's healthy, who's not healthy. But what I do think is that we can always, while it's important to reach out to people who are safe in your world to like ask for help and be surrounded by people or at least their attention and affection when mm-hmm. you are feeling disconnected and lonely is really, really important. It's important to feel connected to others. Um, it's also t- important to feel connected to yourself. So it's just t- sort of thinking about like what's a useful thought exercise to um, – think about to shift from focusing on someone else's feelings to focusing in on your own. Yeah. And this may sound like me asking you to step further into your hurt, but I do recommend that at, for a purpose. Like yep. there's a reason for that because sometimes like, especially people who are conditioned to take care of others, we can easily distract ourselves from how we're feeling and what our needs are by focusing in on someone else's. Um, yeah. That's, oftentimes way more of a comfortable space for us. And the bad news is, is that you will find yourself in this cycle for a very long time to come, even if you find yourself in a healthier relationship in the future, which I hope that you do. So now is really the best time to think about how to start shifting that attention and awareness from someone else's feelings to your own. Yeah. I'm thinking, like, what would it be like for you to imagine all of the ways in which you felt that this partner wasn't focused on your feelings or your needs? And just as an exercise, because I definitely don't want to assume that this partner was to blame for prioritizing their feelings, her feelings all of the time, because sometimes we enable people to do that as well. We don't ask for it, therefore they don't know. So it's like not fair to just be like, she's the worst. What a bad partner. Yeah. We don't know anything, but if you just had to imagine what ways in which do you wish that she turned her attention to your needs while you were in a relationship, start to get familiar with what kind of like compassion that might sound like and see if you can actually start talking to yourself like that a little bit. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Like if I'm sitting here and I'm desiring a partner to start asking me like how my day was and like follow up with questions about like what it was like at work and what, what a bad day was like. Yeah. I may not be experiencing that from another person right now, but I can at least start to get familiar with what it feels like and what it sounds like. Maybe I can start asking myself that, okay, today was bad. What was bad about it? Um, Mm -hmm. Maybe I want, maybe this is a good time to journal. Maybe this is a good time to self dialogue. Move my body. Have a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. And like, yeah. maybe that's like, sometimes that can bring up some natural ways of finding self care and comfort. Okay. I'm not feeling good. Like, maybe I want to like make myself some food. Yeah. Wow. I'm going to bring up food a lot today, you guys. <laughs> We're here for it. It's just going to be what it is. <laughs> Look, the Snickers commercial where it's like, you're yeah. not normal, have a Snickers. <laughs> There's some truth there. When we are hungry, we are in our threat response because (laughs) hunger is the means to survival. And so when it's not being met, we will be, (laughs) mm -hmm, we will be in our fight, flight, freeze, spawn response. And I will also be thinking about it. So anytime, if you hear me, (laughs) if you hear me being like, okay, we're troubleshooting like this problem, Uh, like we're talking about that love is blind. And I'm like, what is... What do they need? Like, maybe they just needed like sit down and have dinner together. Like, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, oh, 100%. Exactly. I'm gonna suggest food, but you know, if that's, if that's helpful to you, then you make yourself you a take snack. it and you run with it. Yeah. I think, yes. um, I think something else just to wrap this up is like, Focus on the things that make you feel good. Like why, how do I let go? You let go by doing what Bree says is like redirecting your attention to you, your needs, your thoughts definitely sounds easier than done, you know, or easier said than done. Um, But what will help you is by, and I say this all the time, nervous system stuff. So even if that looks like 
getting outside, being in the sun, going for a 10 minute walk, going for a hike, going to a boxing class or the gym or something like that. Like allow your body to move, allow yourself to just take these tiny little baby steps. Like I said, if you can only go outside for two minutes, it's better than no minutes, right? If you can only yes. move your body for 30 seconds, it's better than nothing, right? But as you start to do these things over time, you're going to start to feel better and better just because of how we're wired as a species. And when you feel better, everything in your life feels better, right? You're a better partner. You're a better friend. You're a better um, coworker. You're a better employee. You're a better dog mom or dad. Like all of it falls into place when you feel your best. So yeah. if that is helpful, um, which I hope it is. Those are, those are all of our tips for you and the situation yeah. you're going through. And we're sending you a lot of love. Last thing that I'm going to say about it is like, it will suck for a little while. Yeah. Like yeah. Ner regulate your nervous system. That is so important. And while you're doing that, give yourself the permission for it to just ache. Yeah. I don't know how long that's going to take, but I do know that it's normal. Yeah. And cause I also, you know, a year ago was going through a breakup. So I can promise you that what Bree said earlier, like it might feel like you're going into your pain a little bit more, but I can promise you that going through the pain is the way to out of the pain. Like there's when we think like, oh, I can't feel that way. Like I can't miss them. I can't hurt. I'm not going to mm. think about that because it's too painful. We actually subconsciously fuel the wound to stay open. But when we run towards the pain and we're like, okay, this is what I'm dealing with. It's like giving yourself a huge dose of medicine because through yeah. that emotion on the other side is the peace, is the freedom that you're looking for. It's when we avoid our emotions that we short circuit ourselves. So, um, you know, it sounds ass backwards, but I promise that sitting with your emotions and allowing them to be and accepting them for what they are today in this moment is okay. It's okay. Yes. It's, yes. it's healing. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Yes. Um, All right. Wow. We did such a good job. <laughs> High Do you five. need to give yourself a pat on the back? Yeah. <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> Go us. Okay, you guys. We're talking about Love is Blind. Again. This is season four. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about it again, and we will be talking about it again in another Next week. week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're covering episodes three and four today. So what we find ourselves wrapping up is like we see the rest of the engagements or whatever remaining breakups are yet to unfold. Yeah. We see them go to their honeymoon destination, not honeymoon, the like getaway. It's the getaway. They're going to Mexico. Bitch, I want to go to Mexico so bad. Me too. Yeah. Ah. I actually, I was on my, um, yesterday I was looking for my birth certificate to get my passport to make this happen. And I think I need to order a, a birth certificate because I can't find my Listen, you got to do what you got to do. Time to order yeah, a birth certificate. But anyway, we will be going to Mexico. <laughs> we will. I want to go to Mexico so fucking bad. Um, if know. anyone has any Mexico recs of like where to stay. Oh, you, actually, you know some stuff. A little bit. Yeah. Okay, we'll we're start. good. I'll share the Don't pictures for it. <laughs> Don't yeah. DM us. <laughs> Don't DM us. Okay. Um, and, <laughs> and then we, and then we, yeah, sorry, I, I, I'm, I'm so half here. Um, but it's so funny. I'm having such a good time. Good. This is we helping, are too. by the way. We're laughing with you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. they go to Mexico. They start to like cohabitate. Uh, it's so interesting. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk Girl, about it. Girl, okay. I cannot. Yeah. Where are we going to start? It's a whole mess. Okay. Well, we start with Jackie and Marshall get engaged. Congrats. Mazel. Yeah. The end. I, I have more to say about them, but it's, Me too. it happens later. Great. Same. Um, okay. I did, I did want to say one thing about Marshall. I, I, know, I know that he's actually a really good dude. I can, I can tell that he's good. I just – I don't know if it's my own issue – I know that this is my own issue with like, <laughs> like poetic juiciness. Yeah, it makes me want to fucking vomit. It's like, it's a little uh, too it's much. It's so cringy. It's so dramatic. It's like, yo, we aren't in a Jane Austen novel right now, bro. Slow your roll. And I think when that's the right fit for another person, that's not necessarily like 
poetically and spiritually inclined in the way that he is, but like has a deep love and appreciation for that type of expression. I think it's, I think it's beautiful. However, this is my concern with Marshall is that he's <laughs> so, he's so beautifully emo that I actually think that he is blind to like Jackie's edges. Agreed. I think that he's too, He's white like, knighting. Everything. He's white knighting yes. hard right now. White knighting hard. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Big white knight boner. It's, and I think that, like, I think that when someone is so in love with love. Yeah. You put yourself a little bit at risk of having your head in the clouds and seeing every connection that is, like, like, like has a spark to, to begin with is yeah. like the best and most poetic justice c connection that there ever was. And mm. I, I do think that that's challenging. It's so important for us to be grounded and accept, uh, accept ourselves as we are for who we are. But for someone like Marshall, what I would recommend is like, yes, express yourself. Yes. Write journal, write sonnets, like be this version of yourself. Go There's truly nothing wrong with you. Yeah. Exactly. I don't want to date you because I'm probably going to make fun of you and that's not fair to you. No. But I'm probably But I do fun. think that Marshall you like and anyone who is like Marshall you need to ground yourself. Regulate yeah. your nervous system in spaces Perfect. when you are alone just so that you can like come back come back to it. Come back to earth a little. Yeah, yeah I completely that's all. agree. I have more notes on him later, so I'm going to save that for later. Cool. But I am with you, and I am you're also picking up seeing what, what you're seeing. 100. Yes. Okay. Love it. Okay. Then something else that's really cringy that I hated. Kwame and There's Chelsea a lot of write cringy. a song. <laughs> yeah, me too. I literally put, I was like, he has his guitar, and they decide to write a moment. This made me want to throw up a bit. This is my exact no. It also made me want to throw up. Yeah, I was going to say, there's just something about watching these moments that make me cringe. And I, like, because here's the thing. I feel like there's, this is what I feel it is. I think all of us have our super mushy, like, sentimental moments with our person. But when you're with your person and it's private and you both are sharing that moment and it feels good and it feels right, it's not cringy. But for people being, like, flies on the wall for those <laughs> moments, it's like, we can't feel the vibes. We don't feel what they're feeling, right? We're not experiencing what they're experiencing. So to us, it's just like, oh, my God, make it stop. Make it stop. Yes. Oh my god! I had so many moments of that in these like couple. Me of too. I low key wanted to fast forward through it. I didn't, but like, oh, my notes are just like cringe, cringe, cringe. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's I bad. do love what Chelsea has to say though about their slow burn and like feeling calm and like all of that. I do like that she noted that. What I love Chelsea. Me too. I think that I she's. Agree. I think she's a. I think she's down to ride. I think she's a down ass bitch. Yeah, same. I, I agree. After seeing more of her in these two episodes, she's definitely my the girl that I enjoy the most out of all of them. I think she is the most emotionally mature from what we've seen so far, although I'm interested to see how she handles what we will eventually reach in this episode. Um, yeah. And so that's it. Da -da -da. We're going to yeah, keep moving yeah. on. <laughs> Cliffhanger. Um, wait, 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 wait. I had one more oh. thing to say about um, playing pedal, guitar. Pedal. And I wanted to, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I just wanted to get your thoughts, but I'm going to set it up first because here's my thing about playing guitar. Flex. It's super fucking cool. Like, I think playing guitar is a skill that I think is like playing any kind of instrument and having that at your disposal can be so regulating and so... Um, yes, cathartic. Oh, so like I, yes, yeah. I want it so bad. This is why I want your thoughts on this. I also know that it's like it can absolutely help someone like fancy you because it's sexy. Like mm. playing an instrument for another person is sexy. And that's why I believe you should be very careful about when you use when you choose to like do that it, when you're like flirting with someone courting someone if it's going to be about that if it's not about that and you're just like fucking around a guitar and you're playing and like you're not really doing it to like get a reaction out of your partner yeah. like yes go off but my hot take is sometimes when people play their instrument too early in a connection it's manipulative yeah i can see that to a degree 
hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. Maybe I'm just speaking from experience of being manipulated <sighs> by people who play instruments. You're like, stop trying to, you know, Sean Mendez me or something. Yeah. It's seductive. <laughs> like it's seductive. And it's Shawn like, it, and that, it's just sort of how I felt that Kwame was doing. Like, I just didn't find it to be totally authentic. I mean, maybe, maybe there's some of it that was, but it just sort of felt like he's like, I'm going to play the guitar for you. We're going to make a song. Yeah, it can feel Ooh. definitely a little manipulative. I think it can also be like, like, I want you to reassure me, like, tell me how cool and sexy and hot I am because I can play the guitar mm -hmm. 100%. I definitely think that if we aren't conscious, because like, I don't think Kwame consciously thinks any of those things. I, but that's the thing is like, why was he really doing that? Was it because something like he really wanted to share this moment with Chelsea or because I'm like, I feel like that would be a better to do in face to face, not like through a pod wall, you know? Um, so I'm with you. I am not quite sure what the intention was the same time. These two are in this moment are so about each other that it's like, whatever, I'm glad they had their totally, time. but I agree. Totally. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I cringe if I like in the past when I've dated people who were musicians and they wanted to whip that out sooner, it does make me kind of be like, like, not yet. Question. It feels really vulnerable. Yeah. Do you, would you, and this is very, probably very specific to just you. This is not like speaking for all people who can play an instrument. Um, what's your preference for you to like choose when you want to like play the guitar for someone that you're seeing or for them to be like, Hey, like, would you play me a little? Like, oh, you song? mean for me to play? Yeah. Yeah. When you're I don't play for someone. people. I don't play for people. Period. Yeah. Like yeah. my, my past partner and I were together for like three years and I think I played in front of him once mm, and it was over COVID and like the middle of the night. Yeah. And mm -hmm. like it, that was it. And, um, yeah, it's just for me. I've played for you. I have played for girlfriends. Yeah. Like that's yeah. fine. Like I'm totally down to do that. But when it comes to like, that's my thing. Like that's for me and my soul. And so it's not something that I necessarily like share while dating. I'm also not that good. Like I'm not good enough to be like open mic night, like listen to me jam. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like it's way more a thought like, like right now I'm trying to learn, I'm learning Blackbird by the Beatles on my mm -hmm. guitar, which is really fucking hard to play. And mm -hmm. so for me, it's like an artistic challenge, but it feels good. And it's yeah. like, ugh. so that's, well, that's, that's why I that's play. the other thing that I was going to say is that you, you weren't playing for me. You weren't like, Brianna, sit down. I'm going to play you a song. You were learning. You were like, first of all, we were living together. So it, like yeah. your downtime was this my is like downtime. high school. This was high yeah. school days. Yeah. Yeah. And you were like, you were, you were doing exactly that. You were trying to learn a new song. I can't remember what song it was. Yeah. And, and you, you were, were on AIM to... messaging cute boys. Yeah. And I was yeah, on I was... the couch. <laughs> yeah. We were just I was on... <laughs> two little teenage girls. Exactly. I was them. out on these digital streets trying to like run some <laughs> game and you were trying to learn Suddenly I See um, <laughs> on your guitar. <laughs> it was probably more a Green Day song. I walked yeah, in the road, the only road that I... <laughs> yeah. um, But no, I don't play for people. Hard no. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I have cool. had people That's play for me. I, I'm sorry. But I how do you take feel a about moment it? To be like, I have mixed feelings. Like if they're really good and it's something like that, like I have a friend who's like a straight up musician, like has his stuff has been used in commercials. Like that's cool because I know he's comfortable in himself to where like if he's playing for the group or whatever, like it's just like, you know, campfire karaoke type shit. But yeah. when it's like a guy is like you and me one on one, like sit down and let me, I, I get the ick. I do. I get the ick. Yeah. 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 It just feels a little like, and I'm like show off here. Me. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Moving on. Okay. 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 Um, what happens next? Well, at least as far as what I decided to take a note about. Oh, okay. So what Irina begins the Irina and Zach and Bliss uh, love triangle, which eventually becomes a love line. Um, <laughs> Irina starts at, like... It was hard for me to tell if this was manipulative or not because she kind of like one hundred percent manipulative. Okay, I felt my the same way. One hundred percent manipulative. Yeah, it was very much. I'm going to put my insecurities on blast, 
And I want you to tell me that I thought, I thought this was so problematic. I want you to tell me what, what it is that you see in bliss that you don't see in me, which is basically, it sounds like, it's like I know when people do this, right. It sounds like I want you to be honest and tell me how you feel about this other person, but that's not actually what this person is asking. It's no. this covert way of seeking reassurance and also inviting a person to actually talk shit up like, or just reassure you and kind of actually put down another connection, which kind of can translate in their own brain is like, Oh, I do really like this person. Like, I don't know, whatever. It just, it's red triangulation. Flag. As you said, it's a red flag. It's, it's also like, like when you look at this, I want us to all ask ourselves, like, we don't actually want to build connections like this, right? We don't want to do that. I would hope so, but I it's been so fucking normalized. It's like we aren't yeah. making connections with people based off of like when I'm in your presence, how do I feel with you? When I'm having a hard day, do I trust you to like have my best interest in mind and support me? Like we're not making I mean, hopefully through this podcast and mental the mental health movement that's happening now, we will. But in like from what we've seen and what's been normalized, we're really making decisions based off of like we cling to people and then try and fit them into the life that we want instead of like just meeting people, honoring people for who they are and then seeing if naturally we we are a good connection. And that's why all these little like manipulative covert icky tactics come out is because she in this moment isn't focusing on just her and zach she's using zach almost in a way against himself to reassure her while like brie was saying put down bliss in order to soothe irena's shit that she has coming up it's yeah. like it's really icky and it doesn't make for conscious relationships at all like that yeah. is not a real conscious relationship would be Irina going in and being like, oh, my God, there's a part of me that is feeling a little anxious because I feel like I'm being compared to bliss. And so that puts makes me be in my head. So I start comparing myself to bliss because I'm not sure, you know, what you see in her because we're such wildly mm -hmm. different women. And I'm not expecting mm -hmm. an answer from you, but I do want to share that with you because that's what's mm -hmm. coming up for me. And I really value mm -hmm. in my relationships with other people to be able to be honest about the things that I'm experiencing. Mm -hmm. Like that would be an honest, conscious conversation because she's being vulnerable and admitting what she's feeling. But instead of that, she's putting mm -hmm. Zach on the defense by being in this shitty way. So yeah. Mm. We're yes. You. Yeah. Yo, Irina. <laughs> yeah. I got Irina both and eyes. Micah red cards. Both of you. I got both <laughs> eyes on both of you ladies. <laughs> <laughs> for real though i don't know why i just <laughs> gotta work on your villain laugh. Laugh. yeah yeah gotta work on it. <laughs> 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 oh shit okay. it's getting it's scary up in here yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i'll work on it. i'm we're gonna workshop it um okay. <laughs> Okay, we're going to move on. We're moving on. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, interesting. In a I hate it moment. With what? Zach and the boys? Is this where you're going? Before that. It seemed oh, okay, great. like, it seemed like he, Zach had awareness of Irina's game plan. Yes, this is what I want to talk about. Okay. That's all I had to say about it. Carry on. <laughs> okay. So in the guy's quarters, Zach opens up to Marshall and says he feels Irina is immature and plays games to get the guy. Like he literally uses mm -hmm. those words. He's like, I feel like she will play games to get the guy. And he's absolutely right. But he feels that he trusts her. Mm -hmm. Riddle me that one, Batman. And yeah, this is exactly why, in my mind, this is a trauma bond starting to play out again. Because it mm. doesn't make sense that if you can logically acknowledge this person is playing games, right? It feels like this person's emotionally immature. And then your next sentence is something that completely contradicts what you just said, but I trust them. We have to get mm. curious about that because those, like... That doesn't make sense. That right when we think about that logically, like it doesn't make sense. And so what I think mm -hmm. he really is feeling, it's not that he trusts Irina more, it's that he feels this kind of some way with Irina more. And I truly mm -hmm. think that that's mimicking the instability he experienced throughout his 
childhood. And so it mm. feels drawn to this connection. Whereas with Bliss, someone who's been very like verbally affirmative and like there for him and consistent and very open about how much she cares about him. And you're the, like out of every one guy I've met here, you're the one for me. That's not attracted to him, attractive to him because he's right. like, he doesn't, he doesn't need to question where he's at with her. And this happens so much. We see this with Kwame initially and Micah and Chelsea. So it's just like, we need to be aware. The more self-aware you are of your internal state of like, why am I feeling connected to this person? Is it because they make me question where I stand with them, with them, right? Or is it because mm -hmm. they make me feel at peace in my body? They make me don't question where I stand with them. Like what you gotta, you gotta be aware of what's coming right. up. Right. So right. I, yeah. it really was like nails on a chalkboard for me. Yeah. He, uh, Zach is moving towards what's familiar instead of what might lead to a different outcome, a different kind of yep. dynamic, one that he actually is desiring. Um, yeah. I, that's such an, that's such an important distinction, which is Irina's this like push and pull reminds him of relationships that he's had in the past. I, we can't assume everything, but no. very likely the Maybe not the relationship that he had with his mother, but maybe the circumstances of which he was being raised yeah. by his mom and, and not due to anything other than like they were just trying to fucking survive. But exactly. there's a lot of instability. He said he moved once every three months. It's a while. Once every three Especially months. Especially for a child. Yeah. A child. Like, so yeah. it, it, like there's, there's really nothing to speak on as far as his relationship with his mom because he only has good things to say about it. But yeah. this poor kid, while he was a kid, was n not able to ever really relax wherever he was. Mm -hmm. So that in and of itself can develop a conditioned pattern of finding other ways of like instability or I don't know where I'm going to be. I don't know where this is going to lead to as familiar and therefore comforting. Exactly. Yes. Thank you for articulating it so well. That's spot on. So that's what I see happening with these two, yeah. with Zach and Irina, because it just doesn't True. make sense. doesn't make sense. True. And when things don't make sense, it's usually some kind of pattern that we are participating in. That doesn't and serve poor us. Bliss. And poor, poor bliss. bliss. I know. Oh, she handled bliss. it well, okay. though. She did. She handled it really great. Um, yeah. There was one thing that she did, because she's not yeah. a perfect person, that I, that no. I did want to know, which is like uh bliss while bliss this is before zach told her like i'm like i'm oh, we can't see each you. other anymore yeah um but when they were just zach was talking about his fears about meeting family because she was talking about what she was so excited for him to meet family and like that would that's such a big deal to her and zach had mentioned earlier that like meeting family has been really tough because other partners' families have judged him for the way in which he was raised. We talked about that last week. And so Zach clearly has history with this experience. And Bliss has history with her own family, which is to say she describes having very secure relationships with them. They're very important people to her. And she also feels like she's able to be independent in her decision-making from them, which mm. is great for Bliss. I'm really happy for her to have that. That sounds really incredible. However... When Zach is telling her that that's what he's fearful of, her overconfidence in how her family would respond and how she would respond in whatever variety how her family might respond is actually dismissing Zach's fears. Mm. And he's not getting, I mean, again, this could be an edit situation. We're not really seeing her like speak to, but I did want to make an example of this because when someone is telling us, hey, this is what I am scared of, and we receiving it are like, you have nothing to be afraid of. I understand why we do that. And it's not actually meeting your partner where they're at. What we really want to try to do is like reflect back that we are hearing what they're afraid of and ask them more about it so that they can just have more of a space to really like, like give it some life, give it some language. And before we start to counter it and be like, you don't need to be afraid of that because my family is X, Y, and Z. And because I think X, Y, and Z, it's like, 
there it's not really going to separate them from their fear. Right. Yeah. Completely agree. Completely agree. Um, I don't have anything to add to that because that was so well put. I do want to bring up the um, her talking about Irina in a negative way again. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, I agree on what Bliss is trying to communicate with Zach and when people in this setting, this this setting, The Bachelor, Bachelorette, Bachelor in Paradise, any of these kinds of reality TV settings where there's like no separation, like he's either talking to Irina or he's talking to Bliss, it doesn't behoove you to try and help someone see the light. It really does it. The person needs to either figure it out or not. And so I really mm. think that her multiple times bringing up Irina in a negative way and trying to tell Zach like she's not a good person. I agree with her. I don't think Irina is. I think it's not that I think she's a bad human. I think she has a lot of wounds that she's acting out of. And I'm not okay with the way she's treated other people in this right. environment either. Yes. And so yes. mean girl vibes. So it's like, you know, I understand what Bliss is trying to do because she can see Irina. She knows how Irina's being. She knows Zach. She knows Zach's not looking for. So she's thinking in her mind, like, I'm doing the right thing by telling him. But as she's doing that, she's actually shooting herself in the foot because a gossip doesn't look good no matter what. And so right. it's like, you know, I just want to say, like, for anyone who catches themselves on these reality TV shows or <laughs> for anyone who... I don't know what normal dating scenario you'd be in where you know the other person that this other, this person you're dating is dating. It's probably not going to translate. But moral of the story is gossiping and talking about other people is not an attractive quality, even if you're right. right. Even if you're right. Kind of, it can push the person that you're seeing away uh, into their connection with the other person. Which I think is exactly what happened with Bliss and Zach and Irina. Like, I think Bliss talking about Irina, like, she's bringing it up. She's putting it, her in Zach's mind. I really think if she had just stayed in her lane and really focused on, like, nurturing what she had with Zach, he would have chosen her. I mm. do. So, mm. yeah. Anyway. Next. Next. Okay. Chelsea and Kwame get engaged. Yippee. Yay. They're yeah. really cute. They are really cute. Ugh, Kwame kind of bothers me. Bro, we're I don't gonna, know what it is. We're gonna I mean, I know what it. it is later. I know what it yeah. is later. But even in the these earlier stages, I don't know. It just he seems like a dude who has a lot of words. Too many. <laughs> and it's not someone that just is like talking a lot, but I don't know. Like even the way I even felt like, and again, this could be an edit, but even the way that he is depicted seeking support from the guys, he just, he just takes up so much air with his feelings. <laughs> this is sounding really bad. <laughs> I just, I just think that like, dude, like, I don't know, figure it the fuck out. He's. He's just a little melodramatic to me, and maybe that's just a personal issue I have with him. But I'm just sort of like, ugh, come on, bro. I don't know. Uh, I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll table that for another time. I'm curious. Do you think Kwame is anxiously attached or avoidantly attached when you watch ooh, him? Ooh, I'm team ooh, anxious, ooh. but I'm curious to know what you... I don't know. Oh, I. you know what? Team anxious because he's so hell bent on the reassurance. And it, the you didn't. She gave me reassurance. She told me how she felt, like ASAP. Yeah. Um, and I, in the work that I've done, and like even in myself, because like I say this all the time, my default setting is anxious attachment. Um, and I'm really happy to to report back, y'all, that this inner work shit works. Like when you start healing your own stuff, like like I got it on lock. Like I feel so much Yo. better. Okay, wait. Can I co-sign that because you really yeah. do. You Thank really you. do because think about it. Like we don't need to go into details, but like in your dating experiences just as like you're out in here on in these streets, all of those attachment reactions would be showing up. Right. And they're not. And I'm I, like, I'm they're so, not. and even if they like try and bubble up, I'm like, Haha, like, that's cute. Like, it's really yeah. funny. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so the reason I want to bring that up is this, I feel that a lot of times 
um, us hopeless romantics that believe in like a, a connection with someone that truly is your best friend and like knows you through and through and like you don't need to communicate to like get what the other person's thinking like we all I think everyone can kind of like uh, like the idea of that like I don't think there's anything wrong with having this romantic idea I think that when it is so lofty that it's not rooted in reality that's where we really get into to issues like there's going to be times where your partner doesn't know what you're thinking and you need to communicate that there's going to be times yeah. when your partner pisses you off and blah, blah, blah. So I think Kwame is the reason he's so lofty when he expresses himself and like, mm -hmm. you know, in these ways, I think is because he is anxiously attached. He is, and he is still very much stuck in this mindset of like perfect partner for me and like chasing mm. that idea with it not being rooted in reality. You know what gotcha. I mean? Because what he has with Chelsea, I truly think is that. I think Chelsea mm. is a grounded badass bitch and like can literally like come to the table in a partnership equally, at least from what we've seen with her so far, all right? And the four mm. whole episodes we've seen so <laughs> far, this is what I'm getting from her, right? And again, Kwame is like, He's in his head because what do we end up seeing at the pool party? We're going to get there. Dun, dun, dun. <sighs> yeah. That made me want to throw up. I agree with right. you. I think that like, I think that they do, I think that they do have the potential to actually be a really good couple, but they need to, Kwame needs to figure out how to ground himself. He needs to regulate his nervous system. Exactly. Always. Yeah. Yo, Always. if there's one thing you learn from hanging out in our world, it's going to be that. Regulate, Regulate your nervous system. Figure Always. out how you like Daily. to do it and do it frequently. Because you had brought up something that I think was probably a, a piece of content that you did. And it's like, hasn't left my brain since, but it, and maybe it was a piece of content, but you definitely came from you. But it was like, even in the moments where you're like, I want, like, I just want to text back or like, I want to hear from them. Like I should text them. I'm, you had said something you were like, why don't you first try regulating your nervous system? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and <clears throat> it's so true because so much of like the ways in which we seek to connect has actually nothing to do with this like cool spark of a relationship that's building. It has everything to do with how destabilized we feel. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. If Wild. like, oh yeah, I'm gonna, we're gonna just move on because I could talk for hours on forever, this concept. Forever, forever, Moving forever. on. That's why I talk about it on my platform every day. <laughs> right, exactly. Okay. I need to write a um, song. Uh, speaking of songs, I wish that Zach did not sing a song. Oh my God, it was <laughs> awful. This was this was worse than the Kwame moment. I was like, stop, yeah. stop, stop. Oh my God. It was so bad. It was so bad. I had bad. the exact same reaction. I was like hiding and I was like, oh, uh, no, stop it, stop it. Oh, it was so bad. Dude. I put he wrote her a song and starts singing, Oh Jesus, the monkey hide eyes emoji. Like, yeah. <laughs> and then I said, Brie, how do you feel about men who break out into song to express their feelings to you in a serious setting? If it's serious, I hate it. If it's silly, I, I'm on board. Like, let's yeah. make a song together. But if it's serious, I, I actually think I'll leave on site. Yeah. Agreed. And if we're living together, I'm moving out. Yeah. Not anymore. Yeah, yeah, I'm out. <laughs> Here are your keys. Dude, yeah. Boink. It was it was gnarly. I literally wanted to throw up. I wanted yeah. to throw up. I also kind of thought Irina might dump him after that, but she didn't. She didn't. No plot twist. They get engaged, what? which yeah, like, they get duh, engaged. because it's the show. But then we see them meet, which is the beginning of the fourth episode. Womp, womp, womp. Yeah. Ah! It. this is actually the most so awkward. many red flags yeah yeah this is the most awkward uh like love is blind engagement reveal ever yeah okay um poor zach i know zach's not a bad looking guy like he's not no i do think he's like a little intense with the eye contact like i he actually like while irena was like clearly freaking out okay the, quick assessment she clearly does not like him in this moment she nope. doesn't like him he doesn't look like how she th thought he would Wants look him to look like yeah. yeah he doesn't look like someone that she would typically date 
um, she's put off by his energy. Like, she wouldn't date this person. If this was a person that she went on a first date with, she would never see this person again. That's just the vibe that I'm getting. However, I I do, I have been on dates with guys with that have energy kind of like Zach's in this yeah. moment. And it is very off-putting. Okay. Um, take me there. Yeah. Okay. I'm the, it's just. I am thinking of this one guy that I like stuck it out with because I was like, I was like, oh, it's the pandemic. Like I can oh, only see one person at a time. <laughs> now I got to quarantine 14 days before my next date. Yeah. I know co- eye contact is important, but it's also important to take healthy breaks with eye yeah. contact. So I'm just thinking about what it was like to like, for me even to just sit at like, at, first of all, it's Boston. It's winter. It's the pandemic. We're sitting outside. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're at this German spot. The food, German food is great. This place was not. Um, we're sitting outside. We're eating bratwurst. The bratwurst is getting cold. Everything is bad. And this guy is just staring at me like with the intensity of a thousand daggers. And I'm just like... <laughs> I, it doesn't make me feel sexy. It doesn't make me feel no. wanted. It makes me feel threatened. And Ooh. yeah, yeah. So I like got, I got why she was sort of put off. Cause I did sort of yeah. want him to also blink a little. Um, <laughs> but I think that to like in defense of him, I think that he was just kind of taking it all in. And he is just a dude who takes it all in with a very still presence. Yeah. And he looks under. He like he does a thing where he like tilts his chin down and he looks like up. And it mm. is creepy. Yeah. I can see that. I can see that. It's really funny because they both were anxious and having completely different bodily responses to it. Like yeah. Zach was shutting down, like he was freeze. And she was right. hyper aroused. She was like flight, like blah, 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 let's talk, blah, 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 blah. you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. So it was kind of hilarious to watch like two nervous systems come together and like look at it that like black and white because that's like really yeah. what was going on here. So yeah. it was kind of hilarious in like the most awkward, uncomfortable way possible. Made for great television though. That's for damn sure. Great TV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was they, awkward. They do- Zach ends up loosening up in in a beautiful yeah. way. Yeah. Um, so like it's just I think you're right. I think it was just his like uh fight response, not his fight response, but his freeze response. Yeah. Um yeah. So <laughs> here's the thing. Um I didn't like that she kept trying to say she kept making fun of him. Like she kept kind of poking fun at him. And this is, like, so fascinating to me because, like, I've met and I, like, even dating again, there's people who will put on their profiles, like, we have to be able to roast each other. And I I just want to talk to you about this concept of making fun of your partner. Yeah. Because, like, I, I think it can be a real slippery slope. And right here, Irina, she, you start to kind of see how she's going to self-sabotage. She also makes this statement right before she meets him face-to-face and is like, I either want to be completely in love with you or nothing at all. She has this, like, spectrum where she's like, if I'm going to get married to you, it's like I'm all in, like, head over heels or nothing at all. And so then she meets Zach, and I feel like I kind of see her go nothing at all. <laughs> mm-hmm. you know like she pulls way back she starts making fun of him so yeah this whole idea around like making fun of your partner I really feel you have to be gentle with this and it needs to be something that if you are the kind of couple that roasts each other it develops over time in a very safe way I don't think the early onset of a relationship is the time to be testing that what do you think I I agree I was gonna say the same thing about the timing like especially for them in this moment, because they're just seeing each other for the first time. So they're actually both so vulnerable because mm-hmm. of course you're thinking about like, what does this person look like? What, how am I going to feel about how they look? Like, are we going to feel connected? But you're also thinking, are they going to like me? Do they think that I'm attractive? And poor Zach is like, I like, I don't think that Irina would care. She cares very much. I, I think that humor and, 
banter and being able to poke fun at each other is really important for the longevity of a relationship, but it has to be done in a way in which it's sort of like agreed on by both parties. Like yeah. this stuff, it just, it's either going to be part of your connection or used to release tension when you need it, not to like, not to like get over like an awkward moment and, and actually is just the quickest way to make someone feel bad. The way that Irina was doing this was like making fun of what he looked like and yeah. like basically saying in more ways than one, I'm not attracted to you and you look stupid, which yeah. is like, like, how do you expect someone to feel? Yeah. 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 It felt really icky to me. And then here's what made my heart hurt for Zach even more is he eventually proposes again. And while he's proposing to her face to face, he says, I know you care about other people, which had me screaming at the TV because I was like, really want to see the playback of her teaming up with Micah to bully people is what I said. And I was right. also wanting to be like, did you not hear how she was just making fun of you? Like, yeah, it just he's so lost in his emotional sauce. Like you can tell he's not even hearing and like seeing her for who she is in this moment. So yeah, it was painful to watch. Um, and then later Irina in her confessional is like, you know, I need to get used to what he looks like, which was like, ah, it's not okay. Good. Yeah. So now yeah. they go to Mexico. Yeah. Ooh. Everyone's in Mexico. And who do we check in with first? Brit, Brett and Tiffany. I, I like them. Yeah, I'm happy. They seem super good so far. They seem connected. Um, I especially, they're both like pretty emotional people. Yeah. And you know, when we were talking last week about Tiffany's uh, almost similar to Zach, but expressed in a very different way, Tiffany's desire to find like the perfect fit. Like we, we see that again, where they're both like, you're perfect for me, which I understand what they're saying and I understand how that's like quite romantic and very like we're so united. Yeah. I I get the impact. I get the romantic impact of that. But unfortunately, it doesn't leave much room for you or your partner any room for error because what happens when they are suddenly not, not perfect, perfect for you. They don't have a perfect <laughs> response. They don't show up in a perfect way. Like people are still going to be people and people are still going to be people in progress. And so, uh, that was one note that I had, but otherwise I do like the way that Brett expresses how he feels about Tiffany to her. And that's mm. clearly something that she's never, she's not used to, she's not familiar with in a relationship. And I, you could see her processing being like, Oh my God. Like you could tell that she was feeling really seen. And while that may have been very unusual and new to her, you could also see her allow herself to accept it. Yeah. Which I think is really important for us. If so, like if someone that you trust is telling you like, Hey, here are all the ways in which I love you. And I see you. It may be normal that our, that we become defensive and are like, ew, no, <laughs> never that. Couldn't be me. Like, sit, just like sit with it. And if you don't know what to say, like, do what Tiffany does. She's like, I'm speechless right now. I don't even know what to say. Like, that was so crazy in yeah. a good way. Um, but it, I do love that he like sees her. And, and then as like, the days go on, like, you can tell Tiffany is like, f like, she's building on that confidence because she's like, yeah. I don't even care who else is here. I'm a bad bitch. I got my man. My man is sexy. My man is sexy with me. Like they're, they're exploring like non-penetrative yeah. sex. Love um, it. and like the yeah. intimacy is building with them in like a very quick way, but it feels like on, on par for their connection. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really happy for them. And, you yeah. know, this is such a good, like what we see right now is their attachment seems pretty secure with one another because like, as we see with this pool party, like couples that are securely attached kind of have this like really natural, like ebb and flow. Like they can go away and be with their friends, but there's still this kind of like coming togetherness that happens as the event goes on. And you just see that like, there's not, she's not away from him, like staring, watching, overanalyzing, right? If you are seeing that in yourself with a 
partner, that is a sign that you don't feel safe for whatever reason. Like you'd feel yeah. not secure with the relationship. And we don't see that with her. We see that with a lot of the other couples, which we'll talk about yeah. in a second. But yeah. like that right there for their relationship to be there already is a huge green flag. I'm, I'm really proud of them. So keep mm -hmm. going, you guys. I hope you make it to the altar. Before we move on, I want to get a seltzer and I, I'm happy to include this as ASMR. Oh, I'm just going to, yeah, I'm just going to reach over here. You reach, you get that <laughs> seltzer water, bitch. <laughs> and I'm going to just, this is, this is for the audience. Oh, ah, wait, just for you guys. Wow, now I feel the need to go get a spin drip. Oh, mm. what flavor LaCroix do we have there? Mm. <laughs> I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> this is a passion fruit. Yum. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. So um, <laughs> who else do we see in Mexico? Chelsea and Kwame, they're all about each other. Um, Marshall and Jackie. Oh. I was just going to run through some stuff. Do you want to add something? Okay. Marshall and Jackie, um, they ask each other, like, you want to wait to have sex till marriage? And Jackie was like, mm, no. Nope. Hell no. <laughs> yep. Um, oh, Irina and Zach, they have their uh, Zach's stuffed dog. Ralph sleeps with them to help them, as Irina eventually puts it, keep their purity, which I was like, okay. Um, Mike and Paul, she says she likes Paul's dorkiness. So we kind of see them all like, you know, just meeting, figuring it out. But then we get to the pool party. Wait, 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 before we get there. Oh, we don't get to the pool party. We're backing up. <laughs> We're backing up. I just want to say something about Paul and Micah, because I do think that they are sort of curious about their attraction to one another. I think that they can tell that intellectually they feel rather connected like they're able to talk <laughs> and they, they they're not saying anything bad about their connection paul makes um makes mention of how different micah is from other women that he's been attracted to in the past he doesn't put her down he doesn't even necessarily compare them he's like she's beautiful she's a beautiful person like it's nothing about micah i'm used to uh dating <laughs> basically he said specifically women who have herb gardens and so what he's describing is a bit witchy. more of like an herb yeah, he yeah witchy. Witchy. he said witchy um he's like he's like i don't know how to say this but like they literally make potions <laughs> <laughs> and i just i was laughing because i i know so many women who make potions and like they're my kind of people so I, but I just, it's a budding thought of, I'm wondering how attracted Paul is to Micah. Right. Because I don't know. Yeah. Um, and also we should talk about Jackie and Marshall before. Oh, actually, do we? Is it, I think, I think it's see, after. Is it after? Okay. We'll get to it after. Wait. I don't yeah, know. We'll get to it. But after. we can talk about it. Okay, cool. Um, so... <laughs> uh also i just want to say brett and tiffany have a real sexy make out in the bed before the cameras go away that's all i'm saying oh my um, god i couldn't believe uh, that we saw it me too i was like we're there's nothing like we're just full-on this is softcore porn right here yeah um, we're just we're just watching some watching, heavy petting i guess yeah for real um okay so pool party where do we even want to start at this pool party because it starts off at first okay i do want to say then... that in the love is blind world this is my favorite part of the show Me too. which is when yeah. all of the couples who are established couples now see everyone else for the first time it's my favorite fucking part yeah shit always pops off for real. I love that Kwame told Chelsea uh, and very honestly that he was curious about what Micah looks like. And Chelsea was mm -hmm. like, she didn't let that spark anxiety in her. She was like, yeah, of course I totally get that, you know? Um, Grounded. But what I don't like about it is what ends up actually happening at the pool party with Kwame and Micah. Um, but basically everyone comes together. They're people are always curious about the other person they've connected with in the pod. So those people start to say hello to one another. Um, mm -hmm. And 
what we see is Micah and Kwame at first just have like an okay conversation. I did the first conversation didn't bother me. Yeah. Um, but what ends up bothering me is Micah and Irina again team up together and start kind of like flirting with other people's men. So like Irina starts flirting with Paul, which is her girlfriend's guy, which I thought was interesting. Um, yeah. They start talking about like making borscht and stuff like that, which is a Russian food because Irina's Russian. And then which I I think Paul is as well. I think that oh, that's why they were. Cool. And then Micah starts, like, asking Kwame to get her stuff and is just like, will you get us shots of tequila with salt, please? And it was just so I wanted to, like, cringe. I'm like, you know what you're doing. Like, you know what you're doing. Stop. You know? Micah and Irina enable each other, and it's so really much. bad and i know people that are like this like i know people yeah. who are better individually and separate than when they are with uh some some friendships are just like kerosene and a match For and real? not in a not <laughs> in like a cool way where like you guys are just the best friends to be around ever it's like y'all are fucking trouble they're yeah. trouble they're trouble. They, they enable each other. Yeah. Uh, to your point, what we're seeing is them flirting with other people. And I know that alcohol plays a heavy hand in what's going on on this pool party on this day. I get it. However, the behavior, like if everyone was single and this was like Love Island or something, I'd be like, go off. Whatever. Like, yeah. It's sexy. Y'all are but engaged, motherfucker. Y'all are engaged. You're saying you love your partners. Like, it's <laughs> literally your first, like, your first week or your first couple days. Like, you're in like, Mexico. Have, have, like, a little bit of respect. For real. Have a little bit of respect for your partner. And you remember when the, the pool party of the previous season with Raven and Bartise? Yeah. And when Bartise was, like, basically trying to flirt. And I Raven know. was just, she just Shutting shot it down. It down. Yeah. Like, not that you have to do it like that, but Raven, Raven's behavior was such a clear example of like how to have respect for your partner while someone's mm-hmm. actively trying to shoot their shot with you. Don't get right. me wrong. Like, it's nice to have it flirted. Okay. But it's just inappropriate. And the thing is, is like Micah, I think is actually manipulative as fuck. Me too. She's it's manipulative as fuck. Walking the and flag. her, yeah, her behavior with Kwame. Because like, I don't even fault Kwame so much for all of this. Like, I do think that he's an idiot. Yeah, <laughs> but I also think that he's he, a little ignorant. He, I think he's being played with. I think yeah, I think he's yeah. being played with. Like, he really liked Micah. Whatever drew him to her and like the toxicity of it all is like his own is it's those are his wounds and for him to like mm-hmm. deal with and sort out yeah but because he was there i think that he was very much like engaged in micah's ness and yeah. she knew that and she played with that and they're at this pool party and she's fully flirting with him and she's telling him oh my god it's just the most manipulative shit ever you know yeah. that i'm here for you you know that yeah. we can still talk like like that's not the person to go to kwame please be smarter than that like and all on. he's hearing and what he's feeling is like this person i like is still giving me attention this person i like is just still thinks positively of me this person i like still wants me around like of course, when when we are in that position with a person who is like toxic and like would basically is breadcrumbing us, she's breadcrumbing yeah. him. Yeah. And he's just going to like take whatever he can get. So for him, what we see in his behavior, and I, I wanted to come through the screen and be like, Kwame, like shut it down, walk away. Like enough is enough. Yeah. But all that we're seeing is he's just sort of like, I want more. I want more. I want to touch her. Like I want to hold her hand. Like how are you? Like, what's going on? He just wants this conversation to last forever because he's desperate to find out what else am I going to get from this person that I like so much? It was so icky. Yeah. Um, I like, like, she says something really fucked up. She cheers her. They like get a tequila shot finally. And she's like, and to a failed proposal to Kwame because Kwame went to propose and she shot him down basically. And so yeah. he pulls her for a chat and starts to say, like, you know, what was that about? Like, that really hurt. 
And at first she validates him. She's like, yeah, you should be mad. Which I thought, like, it was just so weird. And then um, he goes on to say, like, that hurt. And then she starts to kind of be like, well, I never mean anything malicious. Like, I'm not that kind of person. It's like, yeah, but you said something really fucked up. Like, how was I supposed to take that? And this conversation just turns into a spiral where really all Kwame should have been like is, that was fucked up. And I'm not going to talk to you anymore. (laughs) And, like, walk away. Like, really, I wish he had just done that. But he's so ignorant in like what he's playing into with this Micah dynamic. And it's just, it's so toxic. And Irina, you know, she even says in her confessional, like, I think Paul is so cute. And Micah, she's, I feel like she makes some kind of comment, like Micah doesn't know what she has or something like that. Like where Micah's not, she's acknowledging that Micah's not as attracted to Paul as, as Irina is feeling she's attracted to Paul and how she kind of wishes they look, they Mm -hmm. would swap partners. It was just weird. It just got so weird. It was so icky. And I feel the only thing that I empathize with Irina in this moment is she's sort of having the uh uh-oh moment where she's like, my connection with Zach isn't building and I, or, and, or rather my attraction, and but my attraction to other people here is, and I think that she's just like, uh Oh, like this is not a good sign for me. I, I yeah. personally do think that she would benefit by like sticking out with Zach to see like what could build. But I think that she's too, like, I just want to date the person that I think is the hottest to me. Yeah. Agreed. It's kind of an immature very attraction yeah um yeah. i also think there's a talk- part of her thing that's like i i want what i can't have i think that's also a of thing course for her. that yeah maybe is familiar and yeah. uh comforting to her like i got you zach now you're boring to me next yeah. yeah yeah i i'm curious if they talk to each other in the pods ever her and Paul. um yeah Okay. Um, we have to just quickly touch on Chelsea's reaction to yeah. what's going on. So at first, and she's, she's sit, she sat with Jackie and Tiffany who are just sort of like, they're her home girls in the corner right now, because like their, their situations are, their dynamics with their partners are what they are, but they're not complicated by previous connections with others that are currently on this getaway trip so they're sort of in a different position and poor chelsea is just like witnessing um kwame and micah like continue to talk and continue to talk and at first she does like the cool girl move which is be engaged in a conversation elsewhere not making a thing of it not letting it boil my guy, do your thing. I'll be over here. I'm having a good time. I'm hanging out with my friends. I'm eating barbecue, whatever. Time goes on. Time continues to go on. Time goes on even further. And then she starts to be like, okay, like, this is obviously a problem. Like, are we seeing what I'm seeing? And the girls are yeah. just like, girl, I would, this man would have been dead. Like, yeah. I would have, I would have killed this man. And... I, we don't, uh, I think Chelsea doesn't even like interrupt. She just leaves. And I mm-hmm. feel for her because if I was watching someone that I was, uh, that I just had sex with, that yeah. I just had sex with, yeah. <laughs> be holding hands and touching knees with a girl that he liked and is clearly, this is not a normal platonic conversation. No. And we just fucked. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh no. It yeah, and you're engaged. Me. Like, let's also yeah. just say, like, this wasn't like a one night stand agreed upon thing. Like, they're actively engaged. Like, supposedly in two weeks they're getting married. So yeah, I I feel like if I was Chelsea, I probably would have handled it the same way. I probably would have just left because there's no amount of me like interrupting that conversation, pulling Kwame for a chat, pulling Micah for a chat. That's really going to like soothe the situation. Um, So I would probably remove myself. And then when Kwame, assuming he comes back to the room later, um, (laughs) shows up, I would sit him down for a conversation and be like, this really made me feel uncomfortable. And like, 
yeah, this is some this is something that they definitely need to have a conversation around. And I really hope Kwame wisens up because it's so here's the thing that I find so fascinating. And I think all genders can kind of understand this. But like I have been in relationships before where I've had a a partner who's had a girl that happens to be a friend who is doing this kind of shit. And I can see it so clearly. Um, mm-hmm. And when I've spoken up about it, the guy's been like, mm, I don't see what you see. And it's like, yeah, because you're not a, a girl. Like I'm, I know mm-hmm. the manipulative shit girls will do because I mm-hmm. am one. And I have those same, mm-hmm. I've had those same thoughts come up. Like it's a thing just like any guy can look at a guy trying to swoop in on a girl and know the moves because it's like, guys, no, So it's like, I think we need to really have respect. Let's stop pretending. Mm -hmm. Like, I think partners will so benefit from having respect to hear their partner out, even if it's someone that you don't think would have those intentions, but at least hear them, validate them, and then assess the situation together. Like, that's what I'm hoping will happen with Kwame and Chelsea, but I have a feeling Kwame might get defensive about it. And if that's the case, we're going to start to see their relationship deteriorate. Mm-hmm. So we shall you see. You said it. You said it. We shall see. Um, Let's talk about Jackie and Marshall. Tiff- yeah, Jackie and Marshall. Uh, yeah, they have like a little day outing and they're out in the world and they're eating what I really would love to be eating right now. <laughs> I'm so hungry. Yeah. Um, and it's like chips and guac or ceviche or something. It just looks amazing. And they, <laughs> yep. they start talking about um, Jackie is Jackie's worried. Jackie's mm-hmm. worried about what it, what might happen when she goes home. And at first, I wasn't sure what she was really talking about because she's saying I could like things could flip for me like like a switch or like a light switch. And I at first I thought, does she mean like she won't be into him anymore? Mm-hmm. Like. I like that she told him, hey, I'm not worried about you. I'm worried about me. Um, Yeah. Unfortunately, I didn't feel like Marshall was doing a lot of, like, like asking of more questions. He was just, he skipped right to reassurance. And this seems to be Marshall's, like, kind of toxic trait, um, which is that he's just like, we're good. I got you because he believes so hard in the goodness of him, which I understand. And I believe that about him too, but you are absolutely missing all of the details of a partner who has other edges, other, other parts of insecurities. In, uh, and, and it's totally invalidating of what she's like speaking from. Um, what we learn a little bit later is she is like, I take care of so many people yeah. at home. I'm responsible for so much. Like, I think she, 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 she became triggered. She started thinking about life when she gets back and she became like the wind got knocked out of her sails where she was like, this is nice for right now, but like, right. this isn't real. And it, it was, while I was really feeling for her, I also appreciated the reality of that because we don't often see that on these shows like they're very much like oh my god what an amazing connection we have but it's she's she's very it's and it's clear that it's because of how much that she really does deal with she doesn't have the privilege to see this any other way but she's like none of this is real this is temporary and my real life is waiting for me and that real life and those real situations have me in a fucking chokehold yeah yeah i felt for her in this breakdown and like i so i feel like i i get it like i don't get it because i don't know jackie's life and simultaneously i what i do understand about this is being swept up in something that can feel so good temporarily while also very much knowing the to-do list and the responsibilities you have waiting for you when you get home and being really anxious about how those two worlds are going to marry. Yeah. Um, Because we don't know what Marshall's capacity is to deal with and handle the things that Jackie is going to very much need to handle and deal with when she gets home. Yeah. And so I like that Jackie's like, I need a minute. I like Mm -hmm. that she advocated for that. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I wish she took more of that time to herself. I feel like from what we see and the way that it's presented to us um, on the show, it didn't seem like a very long minute. It felt like five seconds. And then they like are back together talking again. Right. Um, But, and I understand like Marshall's need to be like, you're not going back alone though. Like trying to like, Mm -hmm. I understand him wanting to remind her that. And I completely agree with you. Like it wasn't the time to do that. Like this was really just the time to like get to know her, get to understand what is she's actually thinking about because he doesn't know. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. He has no idea yet. And so, or at least we haven't seen those conversations if they have happened. Yeah. Um, so she cries and he lets her cry. I will say like, I appreciated when she was bawling and they were, he was just hugging her. He yep. was just like letting her do her thing and being like, I know, you know, like he yeah. kept saying, I know, I know, I know, which I'm like, of all the things to choose, like, why did you rest on that? It bothered yeah. me, th- I think more than it bothered Jackie. Cause I'm like, you don't know though, bro. Like yeah. you just keep saying, you know, but you don't, yeah. but I understood what he was trying to do. And I don't think it upset yeah. her that much. I think yeah. he was just trying mm-hmm. to be like, it's okay. Let it out. Yeah. Um, here's where I want to give Marshall some brownie points though. Yeah. And me too. I do want to give him a gold star because later Jackie is feeling some kind of way, probably shame because so many of us have been shamed when it comes to crying, especially in front of our partners, especially women Mm. crying in front of men. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm going to say about that as I roll my eyes. Um, But Jackie says, I'll never have an episode like that again. And Marshall, without missing a beat, says, and if you do, it's okay. And I loved that. Yeah. I loved that. So I do want to say like green flag. That's yeah. a beautiful response because it's unrealistic for Jackie to put that expectation on herself and that expectation on her relationship because it's probably right. bullshit. Yeah, that's not fair. I understand why she's doing no. it. She's trying to do like damage control. Minimize like, it. hey, that was, yeah. yeah, that was a lot. Like, that won't happen again. I agree with you. Like, for him to be able to be like, it's totally fine. You're a strong person. Like, it, yeah. this could happen again. It doesn't mean that you're not strong. Gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, I think that's a phrase that we could adopt a little bit more of mm-hmm. like, and if you do, it's okay. You know, yeah. like people I need think to hear a lot that. Of, we do, we need to hear that. Like we're emotional beings, like, fuck, can we make some space in our lives to like go through some shit and support each other through that instead of trying to rush through like, okay, we don't have time for you to cry right now, you know, get over it. Yeah. It's like, right. Nah. Right. Okay. Right. So, all right. Anything else we need to cover? Nope. That was it. The pool party, though. I'm very, very, very curious to see what happens with Chelsea yeah. and Kwame. I hope that Chelsea... Yeah. Okay, so I did learn that Chelsea's a Taurus, which means that she's very grounded. Taurus sun. She's very grounded, which explains why she's been able to handle everything with such poise up until this point. And I hope that that groundedness translates in her continuing to advocate for herself and her standards in her relationship with Kwame and not just like fawn to maintain the connection and just like accept whatever bullshit that was because it was fucking bullshit. And Micah, I don't know what's coming for you, but karma is. And Irina. Yeah, Yeah. for real. Yeah. So what are we ditching? I mean, I want to say like we're ditching this kind of shit. (laughs) <laughs> we're, we're ditching yeah we're ditching flirting with other people like find another way to connect with men flirting with people who are taken yeah like while you're yeah. taken like no yeah we, yeah i don't i feel like that's such baloney that we even have to name that as a red flag on this show i know i know um, we're, we're doing a do-over we'll, we'll give it to something else um well i definitely want to ditch um feeling the need to apologize or minimize our emotions in front of our Mm -hmm. partners. So like the last thing we Mm -hmm. touched on with Jackie, like, I'm sorry, that'll never happen again. It's like, no, don't be, don't be apologetic for having emotions and concerns about a very real life thing that's stressing you out. If he's going to be your partner, he's going to need to understand what you're going through. He's going to need to be able to figure out how he can support you through what you're going through. And so it's really a disservice when we feel the need to like protect our partner from our human experience. Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. what? 
So that's mm-hmm. what I'm ditching. Fuck no. Love it. If I'm going through some shit, I want my partner to be in it with me. Support me. Minimum. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I am ditching. I'm ditching this thing that while I do believe that Micah did this mm, with like a manipulative intention, I do think that people can do the same thing without that same intention, which is the committing to stay connected and as a resource for support to a person that you're not with anymore. Now that might feel like I'm drawing a hard line on like, don't be there for your exes. Do what makes sense for your relationship as long as it's respecting of everyone's boundaries. Exactly. But the thing is, is like, especially fresh off of a breakup, I want us to recognize, I want the person who's being broken up with to recognize that that person that you, that just sort of rocked your world in a bad way is not actually the best person for you to talk to, period. And if you are the person who dumped someone and you know, like, I, like, let's stop fucking, we're ditching pretending shit that we know. Stop fucking pretending that you don't have power over this person's emotions when it comes to you. For real. Yeah. And so what I want us to ditch is like, give this person space. You are not the person that they should be talking to, confiding in and offering like a, a method of support. It's actually incredibly problematic. This person's a big person. We hope that they're an adult. Let them let them take care of themselves and allow other people to support them. You do not need to be in their corner. None of this, yeah. I, I like none of this fucking bullshit of like you know I'm here for you, right? I'm here for like, you. That face. Ugh. That's what she was doing. I know I'm it's here so you. damsel in distress, <laughs> reversed, weird bullshit. It's so weird. Yeah. It's so icky. Uh, toss it out we're throwing it out yeah yeah the end that's it that's all Uh, i have yeah all right guys well thanks for listening to this week's episode as always if you liked us please leave us a rating and review on wherever the fuck you're listening to this spotify apple Podcasts, what have you um and if you don't yet make sure you follow us on the gram and tiktok at ditch the script pod and if you have a question that you want us to answer head to our website ditch the script pod.com um to submit it and if you would like to apply for a free 30 minute session just a script pod.com slash podcast that's the right. <laughs> Killed it. Okay. Killed it. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye.